Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's word. God is speaking. Today, I want to talk about being spiritually institutionalized. Spiritually institutionalized. And, you know, when you look at institutionalized, when you think about somebody, um, you know, who's been in the system, whether it's been in the prison system, uh, foster care, uh, well, well, when I say foster care, not necessarily in someone's home, but in the system where people, uh, young people are put in detentions or they're put in um, an institution inst until somebody adopts or, or brings them into foster care. Um, some type of way that people have been put into some type of a program um, where they are following a strict set of rules where they are, um, you know, in such a, a place where they can't make decisions on their own. Um, and when we think about somebody who has been in an institution for a long period of time, oftentimes when they are released or freed from that institution, they still have an institution mindset. So when you look at this word, actually, it tells us that a person that has become institutionalized gradually becomes less able to think or act independently because they've lived for a long time under the rules of an institution. So when you think about people that even have been in the system, in the in the prison system uh, for a long period of time, oftentimes the expectation is that they will return to prison. They will return to the institution because they've become accustomed to it. So they go back as though they've not been free. They go back and do the same things that caused them to be uh, put in the institution in the first place because they have an institution mindset, an institutionalized mindset. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about us being spiritually institutionalized that oftentimes people go to church, but they never get free because Jesus tells us that if he abides, if we abide in him and his word abides in us, that we are his disciples that, um, you know, we'll know the truth and it'll make us free. And through him, we're supposed to be liberated. But oftentimes we're like the first generation of the children of Israel who you were freed from the Egyptians, from oppression, from their enemy, from those that um, enslaved them. They were free from the situation, from the people and from the place, but they weren't free up here. So they were still uh, in a, a spiritual um a bondage. They were in a bondage mindset. They were, they were mentally institutionalized where they complained about the entire journey of their freedom headed to the promised land and they began to talk about going back to where they came from, back to where their babies were being killed, back to where they were being enslaved, back to where they were being oppressed, back to where they were being beaten. You know, all of the things that were horrifying that caused them to call out to God in the first place, they were ready to go back because they were they had an, a bondage mentality, an institutionalized mentality. And with us, oftentimes people are delivered from their circumstances, from the generational curse. They're delivered from the stronghold. They're delivered from the addiction. They're de uh, delivered from, you know, the oppression from their past, from the guilt and shame of their past, but they don't recognize their freedom. So instead of walking out the freedom and becoming that new creature in Christ Jesus, they continue to think backwards to go back to familiar because they're used to being in bondage, used to being under the enemy's uh, uh, control, used to being under the world's control, used to following after the fleshly control. And so they don't realize that they have been free enough for them to actually walk in the freedom. That's why when you look in Acts chapter 16 and you see Paul and Silas, when they um, were imprisoned, uh, beaten and imprisoned, you know, and they were simply doing the work of God, they were already free. They were spiritually free, mentally, emotionally free because they were in Christ Jesus. When they were naturally locked up behind bars and locked in stocks and in pain from the beating, they prayed and they praised because they were free. And they knew who they were and they were already walking in purpose. Yes, in the natural, they were locked up, but in the spiritual and in the mind, they were free so they could praise in the midst of it. Whereas the children of Israel, the first generation, they were free uh, in the natural. They were free from the place. They were free from the bondage. They were free from the oppression, but they didn't pray and praise. They complained and they murmured and they didn't even 
trust God enough to go into the promised land. So now you look at the difference between our outward circumstances and our inward position. Your inward position determines if you can walk this life in power and authority with prayer and with praise, a relationship with God, walk in freedom with Christ Jesus like Paul and Silas. Yes, they were locked up in the natural. Yes, oftentimes Paul had been stoned and beaten and in prison, but he was always free, always preaching, always writing letters to the churches, always praising God, always ministering, always spreading the gospel because he was free and he had peace. And when an end came, he said, I fought the good fight of faith. He said, you know, I've run the race. He ran the course. He was done. He said it was a crown waiting on him. He had peace that passes understanding. And so it was his position in Christ because he had given up all things. He had given up the things that pertain to life that would be credentials, things that were, would be considered important to the world. He had given them up. He said, just to know Jesus Christ and him crucified, know the power of his resurrection. And so, but then you look at in the natural, we think if we have bigger cars and bigger houses and more money and more things and status and, and people praising us in position and, and, you know, and crowds following after us, that is great. And we're going to be happy and we're going to be joyous. But the truth is, is that the children of Israel were free in the natural and God was providing for them daily and they no longer were oppressed by the enemy, but now they were oppressed by their mindset because they weren't positioned properly. They were delivered but they didn't know it. And if you don't know it, then it doesn't matter what's going on around you. They were complaining and murmuring with a God who opened up the sea for them, a God who supernaturally provided their food daily, a God whose presence was always there with them, a God who led them and guided them and gave them victory over their enemies, a God who supernaturally delivered them from the oppressor. Instead of them being joyous and praising and remembering what God had done for them, they were complaining and murmuring and wanting to go back. So when you look at these two uh, different examples. You see Paul and Silas bound in the natural, free in the spirit. You see the children of Israel, the first generation, they were delivered in the natural, but they were mentally bound and institutionalized. We need to look at ourselves. Are you still uh, institutionalized spiritually, mentally, and emotionally? Are you still going back to that place of oppression? Are you still desiring to go back to that addiction, that old relationship, that ungodly soul tie, that, that ungodly uh, mindset? Are you still holding on to unforgiveness and bitterness? Are you still going back to the old places, the old things? Are you still gossiping, backbiting, slandering, complaining, and murmuring? Then you are still spiritually institutionalized. But if you're able to praise God no matter what's going on, and you're joyful knowing that God's in control, that he's sovereign, that he's omnipotent, that he, you know, he has all power, that he's El Shaddai that he is sufficient, that he is enough. If you are in a place where it doesn't matter what's going on around you, but you, like Paul, are content in whatever state you find yourself in, that you know how to have much and how to have little. If you are content being in Christ, knowing if God be for you, who can be against you? You have truly been made free because in this world, we will have tribulation, but Jesus said, be of good cheer for he's overcome the world. So trouble's going to happen, but at the end of the day, are you spiritually institutionalized? Are you still walking around like you're in bondage to the enemy, like you are a slave of this world and to sin and to the devil, or are you walking free in Christ that no matter what goes on, you are steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, acknowledging that you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you and that all things are possible to them that believe. Do you have the joy of the Lord, the peace of God that passes understanding, keeping your heart and mind through Christ? Then you have been made free through Christ, through the word, through the shed blood. You are positioned in the one who makes you free free because he's already overcome the world. So you need to look at, and we need to look at as a body of believers and individually in our walk, are we spiritually institutionalized? Have we been grown so accustomed to the ways of the world, the ways of the enemy, that we're walking dead, that we're still walking in bondage, that we don't recognize our freedom in Christ? Or have we grabbed hold of this gift, this free gift of salvation, and realized that we have been made free indeed, that we can go forward in purpose, on purpose, and nothing can stop what God is doing in us, through us, and for us. So this is a day that we need to examine ourselves 
and recognize in John chapter 8 that we have been made free through the truth, through the word abiding in us and us abiding in Christ. That's where you become free. You have to live in him and his word in you. Live in him, his word in you. Live in him, his word in you. And so remember that because every time we walk in disobedience, we have stepped outside of Christ. And that's when we begin to walk in that spiritual mindset of institutionalized bondage mentality. But we have to get to a point where we are spiritually free. That is when God can continue to mold you and shape you and perfect the things that concern you and work things together for your good because you love him and you're called according to his purpose. And so uh, we just want to just stand in position, stay in Christ so that you can walk in your freedom. And remember this verse is a scripture. Remember that um, in John chapter 8, um, let me just go here because I want you to note these scriptures and, and I want you to continue to just confess these scriptures because the word has power. That is the purpose of memorizing scripture is not so that you can say, oh, I, re I remember the scripture. I memorized the scripture. No, you speak the word because the word is power. And when you have the word in you and you use it, this is what Jesus used when the enemy tried to tempt him. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. So in chapter 8, uh, verse 31 of the Gospel of John, Jesus said to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And he tells us, in John 15, that we have to abide in him. You know, he said, without me, you can do nothing. And so without him, we can't walk free. Without him, we can't make it to God because the only way to the father is through the son. So we need to remember that we have to abide in Christ Jesus. What he tells us in verse five of chapter 15, well, actually, chapter 15 of John, verses 4 and 5, he says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bring forth fruit, bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So again, here he talks about him abiding in us and, and, and him abiding in us and we abiding in him. He talks about in John chapter eight, you know, we have to have his word in us. We have to have him in us. We have to be in him. That means that we are united with him. That's what real communion is, is fellowship and relationship with Christ Jesus. And so when we give up our life to live for him, we're free. And so um, I encourage you today, walk in your freedom. Don't be behind bars when you, the bars have already been open. The jail cell has already been unlocked. The shackles have already been loose, but you're still standing in them. You're still behind the bars. If anything is controlling you besides God, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God, then you are standing behind unlocked bars, but you haven't realized your freedom. You haven't pushed open that door. You haven't stepped out of those shackles and those footholds, but you need to walk free today. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for everyone that is listening and watching me right now, Lord God, I pray for freedom that we walk in it. Father, that we recognize the only thing holding us back is ourselves. The only thing that's keeping us in bondage is ourselves. So, Father, I pray that anyone who has been affected, Lord God, by uh, any type of addiction, drugs or alcohol, sexual immorality, ungodly relationships, abuse from the past, guilt and shame, unforgiveness, bitterness, rage, confusion, anything that is binding, any generational curse or stronghold, I pray today they walk in their freedom in Christ, that they abide in Christ and Christ in them, that your word dwells in them richly, that your word is renewing their mind and transforming their lives, that they are being molded and shaped into the men and women of God that you purpose them to be. The men rising up as men of valor and the women rising up as Proverbs 31 virtuous women. So Father, have your way, Lord God, and cause us to walk in purpose, on purpose, in freedom, to walk in the power and authority that's delegated to us through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I pray today that you walk in your freedom, that you walk in power and authority, and you become all that God purposed you to be. And I encourage you to join us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for prayer and for work. Uh, it's on Facebook Live. You can go on my page, Tony Brook Brown, or you can simply call the number underneath this YouTube video. Also, in addition to the 6 a.m. prayer Monday through Friday on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
We go live and we pray over our sons and daughters. Every week it's a different topic. We discuss the topic and then we pray over our sons and daughters, our children of every age from infant all the way up through adult. And so join us if you're able. Also share this word with somebody who may benefit from it. Share the gospel with somebody who's who's lost and unsaved. Share the word and some hope and some love with somebody who's backslidden. Be a vessel and an instrument unto God. He wants to use you for his purposes. And if you want notification, when I upload videos, please hit the subscribe button. If you already have, thank you for being a part of what God is doing as he's joining together believers to pray, to seek him and to study his word that we can walk in power, authority and in freedom. If you are watching this and you're not saved, today is your day. Give your life over to Christ. The wages of sin is death. That means eternal separation from God. It means you're in bondage and you are under the enemy's control and loss and there are consequences and a penalty for sin. However, Jesus came and paid that price for you because God loves you that much that he sent his son to die in your place. All you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he died for you and God raised him from the dead. Repent and turn away from your sins and give your life over to Christ and you can be saved today. You can be free today. You can have new life today. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. If you want eternal and abundant life, hope past this life. And if you want to be free today, just give your life over to Christ. God desires for you to be his child. I pray that you have a blessed day in the Lord and I'll see you next time.